Yeah, microphone set to there, and that's better. There, now you get sound. Try that again. I don't know what happened. We had, we had computer issues last night for Alexander, and I messed with my stuff to get his stuff working. And Good morning again. Welcome to uh, Daily Devotions with Pastor Sutton, April 6th, Wednesday. Weird weather is what I was saying. Um, it, was, it was gray when I got up, uh, raining a little bit early and then it stopped raining and it's cleared off it's sunny now yeah yeah well yeah bonnie said intermittent sun oh my mic's a little hot too um intermittent sunlight but it, 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 it generally nice at the moment but it's gonna it's gonna cloud up again and there's this circular weather pattern that's kind of coming up out of michigan going backwards through canada and coming back through Minnesota towards Wisconsin doing that that swirl thing as the whole thing moves east across us. I could be a weatherman. I just need a map. Bad. So when you tune in one day and there's a weather map behind me, you'll understand why. Uh, so, yeah. So, good morning. Glad glad you're here with us. Spend a little time in, in God's Word. Let's see who has joined us, Who besides those that noticed we had no sound. Lower number today. Um, Wednesday always seems to be a lower number. We had close to 20 on Monday tuning in while I was watching, right? And I don't always know. I, there's, a, there's a spot that it tells me on my screen the number of, of viewers, people who are actually watching me actively right now, and right now that's seven. And I've seen it as high as just over 20. Um, but then there's all the people who watch it throughout the day, too. Um, last time I looked, and, and you can do it, too. You can go to the, the group page and look, and I think we've got 140-some subscribed people here. Um, not that I'm in it for the numbers. I'm going to do this if there were, if there, wherever two or more are gathered, there am I also. So I'll, I'd do this if there were just two of us. Um, good morning, Geraldine and Neil. Neil, you know all about when it's just two of us, right? Those Wednesday nights when it was just you and I. So good morning to you guys. And uh, Brenda, good morning. 50 degrees, light fog, 59 in Calumet. That's beautiful, actually, you know? I mean, the light fog might not be nice, but you're headed to 60. That's 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 where my wife would say the temperature is just about perfect. It'd be too cold for me. I'd be complaining it's too cold. I like T-shirt weather, which is in that that warm 65 to 75 degree range. And you start getting about 75 and it gets uncomfortable again. Um, fishing weather's coming though, and fishing time is coming. I gotta look and see when the lake fishing season opens. It's in, I wanna say it's in the end of April, beginning of May, but I'm not, ice isn't off of the lakes yet. My boat is still covered by uh, snow that's slowly melting. So it's not like I'm gonna go fishing. Although there are banks. Uh, Verna, good morning. Jerry, good morning. Glad to see you guys here with us. Uh, Jeannie, Bob, good morning to you guys. Renee, good morning to you. And there is Bonnie, yeah, 37 headed to 44, and maybe even thunderstorms. I'm hoping we don't get thunderstorms because this time of year they can be, they can either be nothing or they can be really nasty. And there's everybody telling me I have no sound, uh, but we got that fixed. Thank you for telling me that stuff, by the way. I mean, the, the, the VU meter, the, the bouncy thing on the screen that tells me that I've got sound wasn't bouncing. And if I just looked, I would have noticed it. But um, I didn't do a system check before I started today. Uh, so, Verna, good morning. Kathy, good morning to you. Glad to see you here with us. Let's go ahead and, and get get uh, into what we're doing. Oh, there's Connie and Robin. Good morning, guys. I haven't been clicking my likes here. I should... I should click my likes. Um, well, anyway, uh, so good morning, everybody. We'll go ahead when I'm done clicking my likes. And I don't know, does it matter if I click the likes? My thought is if I click the likes, you guys are more likely to see the notifications. If you guys post, you're more likely to see the notifications too. I haven't seen Adam on here in a while. I hope he's doing okay. He's probably busy. Not to send him a note. Hey, uh, let's go ahead. Uh, daily prayer for individuals and families. If you have a copy of the Lutheran service book, it's on page 295. You know, there was a day when everybody had a copy of the hymnal in their home. You didn't have hymnals in the pews at the church. You had to own your hymnal. You brought it to church on Sunday. You took it home uh, and you had it at home. You could sing the hymns at home around the dinner table. 
um, people knew how to sing then. You wonder why people don't know how to sing. That's because we just don't, we don't sing. Europe's different. Europe, they sing in the bars, they sing in the restaurants. Um, I say that as if I've been there. Well, okay, I've seen it in movies. Um, all right, daily prayer individuals and families in morning order. We begin here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our psalm today, Psalm 31, verses 9 through 14. I don't think I'm that familiar with Psalm 31. It's here. I've obviously read it at least uh, three times in the last three years. Our, our psalm, okay, so 39, 31, 9 through 14. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. Because of all my adversaries, I have become a reproach, especially to my neighbors, and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have been forgotten like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, and my soul and my body also. A life spent in sorrow, my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my sin. My bones waste away. I, that's life, right? I mean, that's that's what our lives are like. They 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 fade as time goes on. Our struggles increase. Um, and the world schemes against us. But we remain and we, we call on the Lord to help us, to strengthen us by faith, by his Holy Spirit, by his word and his sacraments, to sustain us in that in this world until, uh, until he decides it's time for us uh, to, be, to be with him uh, in, in his kingdom. So, uh, oh, hey, Praise, good evening to you, and uh, John and Janet, good morning, 76. Well, you're down in Florida. It's going to get hotter. I hope you're going golfing. I hope you're going golfing. Bonnie told me, Riley, that you're hiding in the background back there, so hi to you. I miss you, kid. Um, today, we're jumping, right? I got us from... Uh, Lent 4 into the week of Lent 5, this week, um, and we're only two days behind, Mon Monday, Lent 5. We're jumping over, we, we finished Genesis yesterday, right? Um, and I want to put us in the right place here before I do the reading. Um, we finished Genesis with uh, Joseph's death at 110 years of age, and his request uh, to his uh, sons that when they return to the land of Cana, when the Lord comes to bring them up out of Egypt, um, that they bring his body so that it can be buried with his father uh, and his father's fathers. Um, it, we're going to skip chapter one of Exodus. I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis, okay? There's from the time Joseph passes away until the events of Exodus, um, there's about a 450, 500 year period. Exact dates, wishy-washy, right? Um, but 450 to 500 years during which, during which the, the people of Jacob, Israel, has been in the land of Goshen in the northern regions of Egypt, and they have been 
growing as a people, right? Um, you know, each family has multiple children. Those multiple children have multiple children, and they have multiple children on top of those multiple children, right? And so when when Israel, we, we didn't read it because we skipped over the passage, but uh, in the in the reading selections here. But when Israel, when jo Jacob and his family and their servants all came up, the the twelve, the eleven brothers, uh, Joseph and his family are already there. But Jacob and and the eleven brothers with their households came up to Egypt, came down to Egypt from Cana. Um, there were about seventy people in all. Seventy, not a lot, right? Uh, seventy is a lot if you're in a restaurant or if you're catering a meal. But if you're talking about a region of, or a city, 70 is not very many people. Neighborhood is more than 70. But over 450 years, you multiply, right? Um, and the Pharaoh that, that Joseph ruled with passes. The next Pharaoh is uh, a son of that Pharaoh, and he knew Joseph, and he still has respect for um the Israelite family. But as time goes on, they begin to forget uh, all the things that Joseph had done for them. And the people of Israel go from being a people of uh, status, of, of, of preferred status, uh, to more of a servant level, right? But they've increased in numbers. And I'll tell you a little secret. At the end of Exodus, I don't know if we're going to jump over it, but they, they, they multiply until they're over a million. 450, 450 years, they've multiplied from 70 to over a million people, sons and daughters and children and extended, and now they have tribes. Instead of just being the, the 12 families, it's 12 tribes, right? Um, and the Pharaoh, <clears throat> the Pharaoh of uh, Egypt has become afraid of them, and the people of Egypt have become afraid. What if we go to war with one of the nations around us, and Israel sides with them instead of with us, right? Um, so they begin, they begin to oppress Israel. Um, they begin to to treat them more as servants and eventually as slaves, and they and they put them to hard labor. Um, that's that's where we are at the beginning of Exodus chapter 2. So we skipped Exodus chapter 1. If you want to go back and read it at home, please do. I mean, it's worthwhile, but I want to keep going. Yeah, Bonnie says out loud, because faith comes by hearing, right? We, we do better when we hear God's word than when we just sit and look at it. Even I, when I'm prepping stuff, have to read it aloud. Um, so Exodus chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 22. Now, a man from the house of Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. Oh, I forgot one thing here. Uh, yeah, I forgot one significant thing. I'm sorry to do this to you. But during that first chapter of Exodus, uh, remember, I said Pharaoh was afraid of the of the people. He also gave an edict that um, when the midwives arrive, um, if a child, a male child, is born to the Israelites, they're to kill it, um, and they 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 don't. They refuse to do it. Um, and then Pharaoh, much like Herod the Tetrarch in the time of Christ, Pharaoh gives a command that all children under the age of all male children under the under a certain age are to be killed. Um, he, he doesn't want men amongst the Israelites, not in great quantities, um, because you know, at, at, at least at that time, men are the threat. Men are the ones who are going to fight, right? And so, uh, when when this happens, um, she has to hide the baby. So now, a man from house of Levi went and took his wife, a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him three months. When she could hide him no longer, she took him, took for him a basket made of bulrushes and daubed it with bitumen and pitch, and she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds by the riverbank. 
and his sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her young women walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her servant woman, and she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse from the Hebrew women to nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and she became her son. She named him Moses, because she said, I drew him out of the water. One day when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked on their burdens, and he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He looked this way and that, and seeing no one, he struck down the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. When he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together, and he said to the man in the, in the wrong, Why do you strike your companion? He answered, Who made you a prince and a judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? Then Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses. But Moses fled from, the, from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian. And he sat down by a well. Now, the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their father's flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and saved them and watered their flock. When they came home to their father, Ruel, he said, How is it that you have come home so soon today? They said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Then where is he? Why have you left the man? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zipporah. She gave birth to a son, and he called his name Gershom, for he said, I have been a sojourner in a foreign land. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, Levite, Moses is a Levite, as will be his brother Aaron, his older brother, I believe, um, and Miriam, his sister, right? And um, at the time, again, I, as I said, Pharaoh had put out a command that any Hebrew child, and when, when we go from Abraham uh, to Israel, the people are known as the Hebrews. Um, when we go from uh, from uh, Israel to Moses, we're calling them Israelites, but they're still known as the Hebrews. Um, it's really not till after the Exodus they become known fully as the Israelites. And it's not till after the Babylonian captivity that they become known as the Jews, the, the Judaites, having come from Judah. And we'll talk about that as we go through the Old Testament here. But right now they're, they're known primarily as the Hebrews or the sons of Israel, Israelites. Um, but Moses is a descendant of uh, Jacob's son, Levi. And so uh, his father was a descendant of Levi. His mother was a descendant of Levi. They were the same tribe. They married together. Moses is born a fine child, a beautiful child, right? Everybody's child is beautiful. Every baby's beautiful. I know some of them aren't always as pretty as they could be, but a child is always a wonderful thing. It's a gift from God. It's a gift from God. And um, not wanting the child to die, for three months she hid them. But, you know, after three months, it's kind of hard to hide a baby. I mean, they, they have three months, they're loud. And how do you, how, when, the, when the Egyptian soldiers come through the, the, the Hebrew settlement, how do, you, how do you keep the baby quiet? You're going to wind up smothering them under the blankets. So instead of, 
instead of continuing to hide him, she says, I got to do something. And I think that, that, um, I think that his mother knew that Pharaoh's daughter and her ladies in waiting would be down by the river that day. She takes a, a basket, smears it with bitumen, right? Which is like pitch from a, from a tree. It's what you use to seal boats. So she makes the basket watertight uh, and places here at this point, the child in it. Um, we don't know what his, what his Hebrew name was, what, what his mother and father called him um, and puts him in the river and he floats down the river. And, you know, and this is one of the main stories, one of the main narratives that we make sure our children hear in Sunday schools. Um, but the but the sister stands nearby his sister Miriam we'll later know that she, her name is Miriam but you know we don't have to stay here we can we can know what we know um, watches to see what will happen and and the daughter of Pharaoh comes down to the river uh, to bathe that morning she brings with her her young women and she sees the basket and one of the young women goes and gets it and and brings it when she opens the cover on the basket so often we see the basket as an open top basket but it would have been a covered a closed almost like a casket um she she sees it and um realizes it's one of the huge Hebrews children, but she takes pity on him, right? She's a young lady. Maybe she's had children. I know Moses will eventually have a brother. That, that's the Pharaoh that, that he has to go back and see when he's older. Um, Ramses, if I remember right. Um, in fact, I think his his step-grandfather uh, is Ramses the I, I think. I, don't hold me to that. Um, I got to go check my history. A lot of information to keep up here, um, but she. But then um, Miriam goes over to, to to Pharaoh's daughter and says, "Hey, if if you're going to keep that baby, and it's a lot of hassle right now, would you like me to go to the Hebrew women and get a get a nursemaid for him, a wet nurse, so she can feed him and take care of him until he's of age that he can come to the palace and be taught." Yeah, go get go get me a nurse, and and she brings back Moses's mother, her mother, right? Miriam's mother, Moses's mother, and 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 Pharaoh's daughter says, take this child, and and care for him until he's of the age that he can come to the temple, and I'll pay you for it, right? Imagine that, ladies, if if you were a mother and you got paid to take care of your own children, <laughs> uh, but knowing that you would have to give them up when they're six, seven, eight years old. Um, not that they'd be gone, because I'm sure Moses goes back out to visit uh, his mother. In fact, that's one of the next events takes place. So, so Moses grows with his mother, and when he comes to the temple, when he or when he comes to the palace to live with Pharaoh's daughter, uh, as uh, as a son of as a grandson of the Pharaoh, as an adopted grandson of the Pharaoh, um, and to be raised in the Egyptian schools and in the Egyptian way, um, she names him Moses, meaning drawn from the water, drawn from the water. Um, so when he had grown up, right? So now we jump, let's say, let's say 15 years, let's get him to roughly 20, 25. Um, uh, he's out amongst his people. He's out in the Hebrew areas and he sees an Egyptian beating one of the Hebrews. Remember, I said they're no longer. It's 450 years has passed. They're no longer preferred status. They're now considered servants and slaves to the to the Egyptians, and they want to oppress them um, because they're afraid that if they side with with an enemy, they'll. So they're afraid of them. They're afraid of them. So he sees an Egyptian beating one of his fellow Hebrews, and and he goes and kills the Egyptian and buries him there in the sand. Um, which is wrong, okay? It's it's wrong. It's it's sin. Um, the commandments have not been given yet, right? The commandments will be given to Moses after the Exodus. Um, so the commandment hasn't been given yet, but it is known that it's wrong to kill a man. But he kills a man, hides him in the sand, and the next day he's out there, and a couple of Hebrews are fighting. And of course, you know, news travels fast, especially in a small community. Um, and they've heard about what happened. And so the one who is in the wrong here looks at Moses and says, what are you going to do, kill me like you did that Egyptian? And now Moses knows that the news is out. 
He knows that, that it's out and he's in danger because when Pharaoh hears that Moses, even though he's his adopted grandson, killed an Egyptian, he knows that the Pharaoh will want to kill him for it. Um, and so he flees. He flees to the land of Midian. Uh, he flees to the lands around Mount Sinai. Um, and there he runs into the daughters of the priest from that area, Ruel. And he, the, there's, they're coming down to water their flock, but the other shepherds bully them away. Um, and, and he stops them and, and helps them water their flock. And Ruel says, who is this guy? Bring him back here that I may, that I may feed him. And he and, and Ruel get along. He becomes one of Ruel's assistant shepherds and, and Ruel even gives him his wife Zipporah. So we jump a bunch of years in here as we're doing this. Uh, and they give birth to a, his first son, Gershom, which, which means I've been a sojourner in a foreign land, a sojourner in a foreign land. And he's talking about his time in Egypt, right? Now he's, he's living back amongst the, among, amongst the Hebrews. Ruel, Ruel is a, is a, a his family's a, a Hebrew family. Um, not the same as the ones, they're ones that had separated from it. And there's a whole, uh, they're Kenites is what they are. And there's a whole different thing there, but, but they are still, uh, they are still Hebrews. And so he's back amongst his, his people. Uh, as he's living with Ruel and his new wife Zipporah, um, and, and then and then the stuff will start to happen. So what is this? Well, just like Joseph, right? God worked that which Joseph's brothers thought was for evil, uh, for good, saving the people. But 450 years have passed, and now it's time for God to send a man to bring the people of, of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Um, and Moses is going to be his, his prophet to do this. Um, we don't see those details yet, but we see how Moses gets from point A to point B. Uh, like Joseph, he's, he's taken away from, from his homeland, from his home people, cast into another land, living a different life. Um, you know, he could have, he could have wandered to Midian and found nothing and, and lived the rest of his life as a uh, as an impoverished wanderer um, until the Egyptian uh, Egyptian guards found him and, and put him to death or somebody, a bounty hunter, uh, found him and killed him. But no, God God places him um, under, under the priest of Midian, under Ruel, uh, to keep him safe. And uh, I'm guessing, uh, I'm guessing because it doesn't say this here, but I'm guessing to, he's raised in the in the Israeli faith, in the in the Hebrew faith, at this point, uh, belief in the God Most High, um, and and comes to know who who God is. He's been raised as a as a, as an Egyptian, so he would have been expected to worship the Egyptian pantheon, uh, and probably taught uh, the Egyptian gods. And it's a pantheon; it's a it's a humanistic religion, just like. Um, the Greek gods and the Roman gods and the Norse gods. It's a humanistic works righteousness kind of uh, teaching um, of false gods. Um, but amongst amongst the Midianites, amongst Ruel's people, or the, not the Midianites, but amongst Ruel's people in Midian, he would have been taught about the true God. So God is working. Again, we see God at work. We, you and I can look back from the cross, the events of the cross, and back through the Old Testament. We can see God at work, but Moses can't see it. Tomorrow, he's going to get more involved in it, and, and we'll begin to see how um, uncertain he is about what it is that God wants him to do and his abilities to do what God wants him to do. But, but remember, in, in our lives, in all trouble and tribulation and difficulty, God is always working for the best of those who have faith in him, right? Whenever, whenever we encounter struggles or difficulties, we, whenever we find ourselves in, on our knees in suffering or tribulation, we pray to God Most High, who gives us the strength, the endurance, and the escape from those things through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, who has, who has redeemed us from sin, death, and hell. Amen. The reading, the, the New Testament reading for today was Jesus praying in Gethsemane. So that, that's another case of uh, praying during time of tribulation. Let's continue with the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, 
in the Garden of Gethsemane, you suffered the agony of drinking from the cup of your father's wrath against our sin. Being betrayed by a kiss from one of your own, give us strength to remain awake as we now wait and watch for your coming again, knowing that the father's wrath against us has been satisfied by your bloody death and vindicating resurrection. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray that prayer which our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this goofy Wednesday morning, um, again, the prayers during the first week of the month follow the order of the Lord's Prayer. Today, give us this day our daily bread. O Father in heaven, you make the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and send rain on the just and the unjust. Despite the many sins and failures of your chosen Israel, you mercifully provide for them during their whole 40 years of wandering in the wilderness with Moses. And your son, my Savior Jesus Christ, not only fed more than 5,000 with bread and fish, but he also taught them the truth that he is the bread of life. With the same loving mercy, you teach us not to worry or be anxious about anything. For even the birds of the air and the grass of the field are tended and nourished by your fatherly hand. In your eyes, I am more valuable than they. So calm my heart and mind, which so often wander into anxiety, doubt, and fear. When I worry about the cares of this life, Quiet my troubled soul and redirect me to you who longs to hear such prayers. Remind me of your love and providence for all people, even sinners such as me. Help me also to learn the virtue of contentment, recognizing the many great blessings you have already given to me and having thankful and cheerful hearts at all times. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those who are ill or suffering in body, mind, or soul, those who are in need of your care and compassion, Lord, whose faith may be waning or whose life may be slipping away, we ask that you would assure them of your good grace and the comfort that you give to the body and blood of your Son, our Lord and Savior, who sacrificed himself upon the cross for them and for all mankind. We ask, Lord, especially this day for Peter, Karen, Olive, James, Pat, Lois, Don, Brianne, and all your children, that you would remind them each day of the blessing they have in your Son. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end that all our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, 
that the evil soul may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, it's Wednesday. Uh, if your church has a midweek Lenten service, this is uh, the last midweek of Lent. This is the fifth week of Lent, and so uh, Sunday will be Palm Sunday. So if you haven't yet this this Lenten season, find your way uh, to your congregation, if you can, and hear God's Word preached, whatever series or set of readings your pastor is using. Hear that Word and, and live uh, in what he gives you. Hey, Ashley, I didn't say good morning to you, I don't think. So good morning, Ashley. God's blessings upon you, dear. Um, but yeah, if you've got a chance, go. And uh, if not, Sunday's Palm Sunday. Make sure you don't miss that. I will see you. Oh, yeah, I'll see you here tomorrow morning for our, our daily devotions together. So God's peace be with you. And we'll, we'll see you back here on Thursday. God's peace.